In this screencast, we're going to discuss um, just body membranes as a part of the integumentary system. Um, body membranes include the skin, but also include the, the layers or the coverings or linings of internal cavities. We can classify them by the type of tissue. Um, three out of the four that we'll talk about um, are epithelial membranes meaning that they are composed of epithelial tissue. And that should make sense because since membranes are coverers or liners, uh, being epithelial tissue um, in their makeup should make sense. Um, just one type of connective tissue membranes that are found in the joints, they're called synovial membranes, and they line your articulating joints, um, the, uh, the, the cavity within your knee, for instance. So one membrane, probably the most recognizable to you is called the skin um, and it's otherwise known as the cutaneous membrane. We just talk about it as the skin. It's the outermost boundary of the body. It's special in that it is composed of a special type of stratified squamous epithelium. As we talked about squamous epithelium in the tissues unit, but this happens to be keratinized. And you'll find out more about keratinization in the when we talk about skin, but it uh, keratin is a it's a hardening protein, and what it does is it makes the uh, makes the dead outermost layer of epithelial cells in your skin the outermost layer of your skin makes it uh, a very good boundary. It's uh, essentially waterproof. It's a uh, and protects the underlying tissue. This is just a great slide. This dude right here, skin man, shows you the cutaneous membrane. Uh, any questions? The second type of epithelial membrane is called a mucous membrane. The mucous membrane, essentially, the way to keep it straight, um, which we can return to this, but right here, it lines all body cavities that are open to the exterior, open to the body surface. So there are a lot of these, for example, but, um, you know, the uh, mucosa of your respiratory tract, mucosa of your, um, of reproductive tracts, um, of, of um, your GI tract, gastrointestinal tract, of the digestive system. So they line body cavities that are open to the exterior. And for the most part, in the mouth, for instance, in the esophagus, we're back to the stratified squamous epithelium. The difference is, unlike the skin, the outermost portion of your body, the stratified squamous epithelium here is not keratinized. So one example here, again, the mucosa of the nasal cavity, mouth, and esophagus, as well as in the respiratory system, mucosa of the, of the lungs. So a mucous membrane can also be referred to as the mucosa, mucous membranes and mucosa. The third type of epithelial membrane is a serous membrane. Serous membrane, um, we referred to what it lines, what type of cavity it lines um, like, the, like the mucous membranes, but these line body cavities that are closed to the exterior of the body. So these are, these are truly internal membranes. Um, the, the example, or if, I guess for all serous membranes, they occur in pairs, and the visceral membrane covers the outside of an organ. The parietal membrane lines the inside of a body cavity. So you think about visceral. The word visceral or the word um, viscera refers to internal organs. So visceral layer is a serous membrane that covers the outside of an organ. The parietal layer is the serous membrane that lines the inside of the body cavity. Um, and there is a space between those two layers. So this is, a, this is just a good little uh, model of, of serous membranes found in your book as well. And um, if, you, if you think about this as being the two layers of serous membranes, the layer of this balloon that surrounds the fist that's like, the, that's like the actual visceral membrane because it surrounds the structure. The 
outer layer of the balloon wall out here would represent the layer that lines the cavity, or in other words, the parietal layer. And then, of course, there's a space in between. These are specific serous membranes that were found in the body. Um, these, are, these are all three. These are ones that are very common, and you might run across those just in reference, but you aren't responsible to be able to know the difference between them. Here's those examples, again, of specific serous membranes. The parietal peritoneum versus the visceral peritoneum. The visceral peritoneum is going to surround the organs here, and the parietal peritoneum is actually lining of the cavity where all of these organs sit. Lastly, remember this is a connective tissue membrane. It's composed of connective tissues, and the only representation of the connective tissue uh, membrane is a synovial membrane. This lines the synovial, they're called the synovial joints. So these are the articulating joints in the body. Um, common names for them just being your knee joint, elbow joint, shoulder joint, your, the knuckles, etc., etc. Usually found where long bones, like for instance your femur as well as your tibia, are going to articulate with one another, move with one another. And here is just a representative of a synovial joint. Um, these two long bones that have a cavity here, but they are surrounded. The cavity is formed by connective tissue. So we just need to know that for, for um, classification purposes, that this is a synovial connective tissue joint. But you, uh, you don't need to know the individual um, parts or anatomy of a synovial joint.